call your first witness. <laughs> state calls Nicholas LaFleur. State, state your name and spell your last name for the court record, please. My name is Nicholas LaFleur. My last name is spelled L-E-F-L-E-U-R. And how are you currently employed? The City of Santa Fe Police Department. And what do you do there? Police officer. How long have you been employed at the City of Santa Fe? Two years. Can everyone hear Officer LaFleur? Okay. Um, and prior to working for the Santa Fe Police Department, did you work anywhere else? Yes, ma'am. Where did you work? The Santa Fe County Sheriff's Department. And how long did you work at the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Department? About two years. And were you on duty on October 21st of 2021? Yes. Did you receive a dispatch call? Yes. Can you tell us what, what you received and what you did? Um, call came in that there was someone shot at a movie set. Unclear who shot, <coughs> how many were shot. I happened to be the closest person to the call and arrived on scene first. So when you arrived on scene, when you say first, were there other law enforcement officers there? No, not at the time when I got there. Uh, were there any other uh, first responders present? There were some fire route, fire personnel and what they called a scene medic for the movie movie set, I guess. You said a scene medic? So when you, let, let me ask you, when you receive a call or a shooting, what's your primary concern? Priority life. What do you and mean make you said priority life? Uh, make sure whoever needs help gets help and that the, the threat is stopped. And when you arrived on the scene, and where was it? Bonanza Creek movie set, I guess. It's, it's quite a ways off the interstate. And what uh, county and state is that in? Santa Fe County, state of New Mexico. So when, when you arrived there, give us an idea of what you saw. What was going on? Um, it was a big, old, cowboy, western-themed city or a town. There's a bunch of people running everywhere, a bunch of cars, a bunch of people pointing. When I got there, people were pointing towards a, a church. When I got out, I attempted to grab my medical bag and went in and saw. Hang on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop you there. Uh, approximately how many people were there on scene? I don't have the direct number, but there was more than 100 people. Have you ever been called to a shooting where there were 100 people already on scene? No. Did that present any specific challenges for you? Yes. Ex explain to us what those challenges were. So there's a lot of moving parts. You just got to take it one, part, one piece at a time, see who's hurt, make sure that one, that nobody's continually getting hurt, and then two, the person who's hurt, um, medical attention is being given to them, and then go from there. And when you arrived on scene that day, uh, were you running your body-worn camera? Yes. The state moves for the admission of State's Exhibit 4. No further objections, Your Honor. Am I eight? I want to just make sure I'm connected. I'm ready to play it. Permission to publish? Yes, Your Honor. We've consented to both la la lapel videos right, today. That's fine. Four. How do I get the monitors to come on? I just wanted to do it. You know how to do it? Go ahead and do it. <coughs> This one's not. It's on, but it's green light. Green light's on. Let me go get the doctor. Well, can he review it from here while he's looking? Or do you want? Sure, if the monitor won't just come on. He's got to get the adapter. Go get the adapter. Okay. Uh, Officer LaFleur, do you want to turn around and, and just look at the monitor on the wall behind you? It doesn't matter, man. Okay, let's do that. You got 
got your, you got your tonic kit? Yeah, I'm trying to heat it up. Stupid new truck. Are we inside with the BBMs? Officer LaFleur, tell us, t tell us what's going on in the video right now. Um, I'm looking for my other medic bag. I handed the individual a, a trauma pack um, for shooting, and I'm attempting to open a, um, one of the storage boxes and, in the back of the truck. Who, who was the individual that you handed something to? Um, I believe it was a fire, per, fire personnel that I followed in, a volunteer firefighter maybe. And I, I thought I heard uh, the word, is it BVM? Um, it's, it's for CPR. It's a bag valve mask. Bag so, valve yeah, mask. BVM. Okay, thank you. talking about there when you say air flight um, uh, helicopter that's designed to transport people that need advanced treatment faster than ambulance it's a helicopter that air paramedics basically uh, did you call for the helicopter or or did someone else do that do you know um, that individual said that they had already called one but I I called one for his one as well you called radio. also yes ma'am and why did you feel that it was necessary to have a helicopter arrive? Someone who was shot across the chest. We're quite a ways out for an ambulance to, in reference to where the hospital is, so. And when you say you were quite a ways out, how, how far away is Bonanza Creek? From a hospital? Sure. Um, running lights and sirens, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or more. Okay. Thirty-two Santa Fe. One female shot in the chest. Male shot in the stomach. Request an air flight. Request an air flight. I heard you there say male shot in the stomach. Is that what you said? I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't really hear it. Um. Well, as you sit here today, do you recall uh, where the other person was shot? Somewhere in the chest. Okay. Or shoulder area. Thank you. GPS? Uh, GPS coordinates. It's okay. It's okay. I got you right here. 32, how many people yell at there? 32, I got uh, just Santa Fe medics. In your video, sir, can you identify who the set medic is? Uh, it's a little blurry, but I believe it's this lady right. The one that's bent over with her uh, blondish brown hair. Is the monitor working now? Yeah. No, yes. This monitor is working now. Oh, it is? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do, do, you know, do you know how to touch it to, to put it? There you go. Thank you. I appreciate you. You can go ahead and remove that. 
Oh, I don't know how to remove it. How to, can you show them how to remove it? Oh, uh, push on the menu button. Clear. Okay. Then if it's in the way, just push them in. Do you know who these other people are that are in the room? No. I know that uh, that person, that person, and somebody over here, um, the battalion chief, they were wearing Santa Fe medic, uh, county fire medic shirts. So. And they came in in the, the vehicle in front of me. You don't know who the other people are that are in the room? Um, I know the other person shot, and then um, Elena Hutchins, or I don't know, maybe misspelled her name or pronounced it, and then the uh, other assistance director, and that's about it. Okay. Um, and, and you mentioned that, that there was a, a, a truck pulling in ahead of you. It was a volunteer firefighter truck. So did the first responders that we see here in this scene, did they arrive about the same time you did? Yes. <coughs> 32 Santa Fe Bolt, approximately 140 pounds. Elderly male and young female. Who do you need me here? No. Hey, You want a BBM? Yeah, she said, yeah, Officer LaFleur, tell us what you're doing now and why. Um, I looked over and seen that they were getting the oxygen tank out. Um, noticed that they were using on a bag valve mask, which uh, was more appropriate for that situation than the one that goes around their face. Um, I'm just helping them, doing as much as I can to help. So g give us a little bit more information. Uh, what causes you to believe that the bag valve mask is more appropriate than the one that goes around your face? And when you say the one that goes around your face, what do you mean? Um, if the oxygen were to run out or they had to use manual um, breaths, they could use the bag. The other one is just something that's over their face. Okay. And what made you think that the bag valve mask was more appropriate? Um, nothing really. I just believe it's, it's, that's more, I don't know. Officer LaFleur, are you trained in life-saving measures? To an extent, yes. Okay. Was it anything about your training that caused you to think that that would be more appropriate? Uh, it's just what we've tra been trained with versus the one that uh, was already on her. Okay. Gabby, Gabby, can you just make sure nobody else comes in? Yeah, we got here. Do you have ears, ma'am? Do you have stethoscope? Uh, yes, they're in that bag. Right there at the top. Purple? Nope, at the top. Where are you coming? Where do you go out? This year, this year. Uh, Helena. Helena. Is, is anybody allowed to go with her in the helicopter? No, no. Helena, deep breath. Deep breath, Helena. There you go. Deep breath. Deep breath, Helena. Deep breath. Be okay. Good girl. Good girl. There you go. Good girl. Deep breath. Deep breath. Jesus. Jesus. Entrance is here. Exit's back here. 
Do you guys pack it? Uh, no. What do you I guys need? A, uh, I just need another dog pack. Dog pack? Something for um, pressure. Uh, uh, I'll take a big one. This one? No, no, no. This one? No, no. no. Uh, uh, this one? Do you have an app pack? Underneath the lower yeah. shoulder blade, the top of the top of the area coming through. Yeah, no, I'm not taking a big one. Alright, thank you. Uh, I just need something big. Thank you. Do you got a stretcher? Yeah. Uh, not yeah, me here, no. Okay. Let me help him get the stretch. Well, what are you doing now? Just trying to stay busy, help clear the way for the stretcher. The ambulance is here. Thank you. Huge priority number one. Clearing all this stuff out of here. Get her in here and get her out. All right, yeah, we got airplane rounds. Uh, not following me here. We can get a few of them. Helena? Helena Hutchinson. This is Helena Hutchinson. What's that? 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 Officer LeFleur, have additional first responders now arrived? Yes. Uh, can, can you give us an idea of who's on set assisting now? So it looks like more paramedics have arrived and Lieutenant Benavides is right there. Okay, the, uh, and, and uh, do you mean this gentleman here? Yes, ma'am. That my cursor is on? And, and who was Lieutenant Benavides? Um, he was our day shift lieutenant at the time. Was he a supervisor? Yes, ma'am. We got it through and through on her. We went through and through on her, through the chest, and then you got one in the arm over there. Whose voice is that that we're hearing? Lieutenant Benavides. Hutchins is being taken now um, into the back of the ambulance and can you explain why is she going into the back of an ambulance rather than the helicopter the helicopter hasn't arrived yet and my understanding is that they have additional medicines and um, equipment and measures they can take inside of an ambulance all right thank you Disconnect the air. You got it? Hey, Tim, can you take over that? You guys want to see Vincent? 32 Santa Fe, what's the ETA on the bird? What did you just say? I asked the ETA on the helicopter. And who are you speaking to? Uh, Santa Fe Dispatch. Do you recall how they responded? 
It's been a minute since I watched this video, so. All right. Oh, we got the bird right here. Is the helicopter now arriving? Yes, ma'am. I'm grabbing crime scene tape. Why are you grabbing crime scene tape? Um, to start the crime scene. I don't know if anybody had told me to grab the tape yet, but I knew we needed to start one. So. You felt that you needed to put up crime scene t crime scene tape. Yes, ma'am. Or somebody may have asked for it. What's that? I'm sorry. Uh, or somebody may have, somebody may have asked asked me for it. I'm. Just not too sure. Okay. And what's crime scene tape used for? To mark the perimeter or the inner perimeter of essentially a crime scene in which they want to tape off and only allow certain people in and out. Okay. And was that an issue in this scene? The crime scene? Well, cordoning off the crime scene, was that an issue here? Yeah, it's, it's it was a... a unique situation because of the uh, you can't really tie crime scene tape to nothing so we had th I think in one point they actually used our patrol units as to tie the tape around and go to the next one and why is it important to cordon that off um, just for evident evidence purposes um, and allow only certain people in and out because at this point we didn't know what was going on so and were there uh, people in that area that were not first responders? Yes. Approximately how many, if you recall? I don't know. I couldn't give you a number, really. There was just a lot of people on the outside um, that I hadn't seen originally inside the church. So. Okay. And did you know who those people were? No. Okay. shirt yes ma'am was that a first responder no so when the crime scene tape goes up what happens to that person uh, I can't recall well, I haven't watched the video yet hypothetically is that person allowed to stay inside the crime scene no okay who are the people that are allowed to stay inside the tape um, medical and law for first responders talked with the paramedics inside the ambulance and they asked me where the helicopter was. I told him it was landing and he asked them to bring the, the paramedics to them. So you're bringing the 
paramedic from the helicopter to the ambulance. Yes. All right. We got a, uh, approximately 23 year old female in the back of the ambulance right now. Gunshot underneath the right arm. Went through all the way to the back left. Can we carry this back for you, sir? Okay. You got it? Have you guys just step over there for Absolutely. us, okay? Can I have you guys get over there for us? We're gonna have to gather everybody up, get everybody's names, everybody who's on scene, okay? What are you doing now? Um, just trying to think what's next. Um, I think I'm putting the pilot, one of the pilots, um, head headgear inside the ambulance on the other side of the door. Why are you telling those people to move? Um, just to start to gather people up because they're just standing around the, uh, the church where the said incident happened. Why didn't you do that when you initially got there? Um, just went, went in and um, made sure that medical, uh, that people were receiving medical treatment and then slowly go with the go with the flow. See what what it could do next. It is. Are, are you trained to take action to save lives before moving witnesses around? Yes, ma'am. Sir, I believe you guys will be taking this one. Did she go in the bird? No, not yet. They're 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 they did an IVs, get an IO, and then they're gonna take in the bird. They're coming out. Watch yourself. They're moving in from this one. Yeah, yeah. A couple of them. Is that your truck? And whose jack is that? Joel. Joel? Okay. It's got his phone. Hey, be careful. It is bloody. Okay. It's got his phone. It's got his other stuff in it. Okay. Well, we're going to just keep it here. So, he was his phone? Officer LaFleur, uh, this woman who, who is speaking right now, she's not a police officer, right? No. Um, was she employed with the uh, fire department? No. She was there... Set medic, I'm guessing. When you say set medic, do you mean she's the medic on the movie set? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, he was wearing it. Why? Where's his phone at? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. No do you have any idea why movie sets would have medic, me medical personnel on scene? Um, it's probably for safety reasons. Someone closer than the paramedics or fire department. For safety reasons? Yeah. Phone. Anybody have to? Yeah. All 
All right, gentlemen. Um, I just need your IDs, and then have you guys step outside and wait for the investigators to get here. Okay? Okay. Cool. Okay, cool. Any idea who these guys are? Just more uh, people involved with the movie set. Movie set employees? Yeah. Is that your impression? Yes, ma'am. And who's the props guy? Who's in charge of props? She has green and purple hair. You can't miss her. Okay. I was on. I was here when it happened. Oh, you were here when it happened? Yes, sir. Who else was here when it happened? Uh, my uh, 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 the camera uh, operator. Uh, How many people do you think were in here when it happened? Uh, three, maybe four. Four? Maybe. Okay. So two more other than you two? Reed, as soon as I see him, he Reed. was the camera operator. Reed, yes sir. Okay, who else? Reed Russell was here. Uh, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin was the actor on set that pulled the trigger. Alec Baldwin? Yes sir. Where's he at? We got one Alec Baldwin here. Yeah, you help me find him? Yes Okay. How's it going, sir? Um, so, I, my understanding, um, you, were, you were in the room when the lady, when someone I was, was the shot? Holding the gun, yeah. Okay, alrighty. Um, what do you need? Well, I, I know your name, so <laughs> it's, it's, uh, um, Jenny Pursuant to the uh, stipulation, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, jump ahead. Very good. I want to make sure this is the right part. Okay. Let me get with my lieutenant and see, see where, we want right. you to, where we want you to hang out, okay? I have, I, whatever you want to do. Yes, sir. All right. Give me just a second. LT. So I got. So apparently I was not given the appropriate reaction. You want me to jump ahead five seconds now? What? I need to know what to do, or I just press play. What? What do I do? Do you want to pull the trigger? Do you want me to have him sit tight or? Yeah, you're gonna have to sit tight. Sit tight and you I have the armor in here. This is all their stuff. I have the, the gun used is in there. And I got the two people that were in the room. Okay. Do you want me to have Alec Baldwin take a seat in the back of my unit or? Um, no, I, we know where he's at. We know who he is. Yeah. We just need to say, is he in a trailer? No, he's right there in the gray and black. Okay. All right, so. Try to keep him away from everybody. Okay. Have him talk to anybody. Okay. I can just have him sit. I can sit with him in my unit. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Officer Lafleur, at this point in time, what's your intention? I was going to go back to where uh, Mr. Baldwin was, and then escort him to my unit. When I got there, I realized my unit is over here, being used as a post for the crime scene. So what did you do when you realized that? Um, just had him sit where he was and had everybody just hang out there. Started writing down people's names. Okay. Um, What are these people doing? Seems like they're talking about what happened. 
Now, as a law enforcement officer, is that something that concerns you? Uh, yes. And why? why? Why does that concern you? Um, they could be, um, one person could be telling them what they saw and I mess up what they have to say what they saw. So it could essentially um, um, coerce testimony, I guess. People would say the same thing because the other person said it, rather okay. than saying their own their own opinion, their own view of what they saw. Okay. Like, uh, Mr. Baldwin, um, who's the director on scene? The guy that was shot. The, the, the guy that was shot. Okay. Where is he now? I think he's in the ambulance. Do you guys have a, a production car? Or? There's an AD. His name is Dave. I'm, for you right now. Okay. I'm happy to stay right here and do everything. Well, uh, my, my lieutenant, I just want you to, to stay away from everybody and not to talk to nobody. So, um, I, I was. Wait right here. We can wait right here and have everybody step back, or we can wait in the back of my patrol unit, but I prefer to not right put you there, okay? Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you want some, you want water or something? Yeah. Now? I want to find props to get a cigarette. So, why did you let Mr. Baldwin sit there instead of putting him in some vehicle and separating him from the other witnesses? Um,. Like I said, my unit was clear across being used as a uh, post, and just because I didn't know what we had right there, came to maintain cooperation with people involved. Well, it sounds like you gave him an option. You let him choose. Is that right? Um, yeah, he wanted to stay right there, and figured if I could keep him there, um, I didn't see a big problem with it until uh, later on when people were talking and whatnot. And. Did, did you give uh, Mr. Baldwin instructions about whether or not he could speak to people? I did tell him to stop talking. Um, and did you give instructions to the other witnesses that were around? Um, I didn't tell tell them, um, but I told them that he had to sit there and um, not talk to nobody. Okay. I got a big one. What do you got? I got medium. Armor. We'll take it. Yes, sir. Right, I'm right this there. Silver right there. car is Alex's vehicle. If you want to put him in there. Maybe Mr. Baldwin, is that your car? Yeah. We can wait in there. You want me to stay here? We can wait in your car be, if you if you want to. I can't smoke the car. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we can wait. Hang out right here then. Joe gone? Are they both gone? They're, they, uh, well, they're still working on the female. Uh, if you, you haven't seen the helicopter take off, then they're not gone yet. If you know Officer LaFleur, why hadn't the helicopter taken off yet? I don't know exactly why, but my guess is they have to stabilize the patient before they can put them in, in the air. In the air, okay. Why are you just standing there? Just standing with Mr. Baldwin, allowing him to smoke a cigarette. Making and, sure. and why is it important for you to be standing there? Um, essentially, he's detained, not free to leave, um, so I'm there with him. Right there, he took his radio off, but that's our first AD. That one right there? Talking to him. 
guy with the white uh, hair. Yeah, the guy in front of that sheriff's car with the gray hair, kind of, and the okay. shirt. Okay. Why do you have these these two gentlemen uh, standing over there that we can see? What what is there something important about them? Um, the guy in the gray was I had him stand over there because he was inside the room when I had first got at the uh, the church, and um, the other guy in the brown uh, apparently was in the in the church too. So I just wanted everybody who was in the church in one area so we could be easily be found. So, you wanted everyone that was in the church in one area? Yes, ma'am. And are we looking at that area? Um, to the left of Baldwin is where the majority of everybody was, yes. Okay. And those were the witnesses that were in the church? From what I was told, yes. Okay. So, Mr. Baldwin, um, how many people were in the room when it happened? It's a crew. It's a crew? Outside the inside that building. Okay. He's the one that knows what was going on. He's asking how many people were in the room at the time. How's it going, sir? Deputy LaFleur. Um, how many people were in the room at this at the time? Six. Six? Seven. Six. Officer LaFleur, who's this gentleman who's speaking now in the blue jean shirt? Um, from what I was told, he was on one of the other directors. Six or seven. I need a uh, definite answer. Sure. I don't know. Okay. So I got one here, the two that were injured, that makes three, and then these two gentlemen, four or five, um, so who, who would be the other two? Yeah, he's got Ross. Um, more than six. Okay. Were you in the room? I was at the door. You were at the door? Can I get your ID? Do you know whether or not the person in the jean shirt was a what was inside the church and witnessed the incident? Uh, I do not know. Okay, why don't you come over to the back of Does it appear to you that Mr. Baldwin is speaking to the other witnesses? Um, I think he was talking about who was, who would have the, who would know who's in the room. Okay. I can't really hear it. Um, and then the, apparently the guy's son was working there as well. Okay. Um, is this an ideal way to separate someone from witnesses? Uh, after looking at it, probably not, but that's what happened. Okay. So. Understood. You arrived at the door? Do you have an idea on you, sir? As of right now, her, 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 her status is questionable. That's why we called the air, air light. Like, where were you at, sir? I was right behind him. Right behind him? Okay. Yeah, I was right behind him right when it happened. All right. So just have you guys hang out for me right here. Um, we'll get someone to get your statement in just a second, okay? And then we cleared, they cleared the gun outside. Officer LaFleur, uh, does it seem to you right now that they're talking about the incident? It seems like they're talking about the gun that was used in the incident.
officer, do you know what this conversation is about that we're watching right here? Something about a shake test. I don't know. Maybe um, the rounds, dummy rounds, maybe. Okay. I'm not too entirely sure. Do you agree with me that, well, was Mr. Baldwin supposed to be talking about the incident? <coughs> no, ma'am. Does he appear to be doing it anyway? Yes, ma'am. talking about the incident? Yes, ma'am. Is there a reason that you didn't stop him since you told him not to? I think uh, as time goes on, I tell him to stop. Get your ID, sir. That's what I said. I think there was more than six or seven guys. I think it was eight. You see this gentleman over here on the left? Yes, ma'am. Any reason to believe he was inside the room at the time? Yeah, I'm not sure at this point. Basically, they're, they're trying to stabilize her vital signs enough for the, the flight sure. and, and administer any kind of nar uh, narcotics or anything they need, blood thinners, that may be. Then they'll load her up in the, in the helicopter and they'll fly her there. I believe the other ambulance is on the other side, um, and he seems to be doing better than she was, so Absolutely. they might drive him in an ambulance. Okay. I heard him wave off the other bird, so. St. Vincent's. They're both trauma ones. So. Thanks for the information. I was curious. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, no problem.
Officer Lafleur, have more first responders now arrived? Um, off to your oh, off to your right, you can see. There it is. Off to your right, you can see uh, <coughs> more patrol units showing up. Um, this deputy showed up, but uh, this corporal had been there for a minute. And approximately how long have you now been on scene? Um, according to my body cam, a little over 25 minutes. Okay. Hey, Corporal. I got uh, seven people there in the room when it happened, all their IDs, so. Okay. Uh, Get it all brought that down, I'll show you what the CID can offer it. It's okay. At that point in time, what was your understanding of how many people were in the room and witnessed it? Uh, I believe I said seven. Okay. Do you know whether or not that turned out to be true? Um, I think there was actually more. I wrote all the people who said that were, they were in the room uh, in my report. Okay. Hey, sir. Okay. Um, and I'm just hanging out with him because yeah, he's the one who pulled the trigger. So. Okay. Yeah, he, he tried it. Sorry, I didn't. I was trying <laughs> to set things up a while ago. And, You got a notepad, Freddie? Right. Do you have a notepad? Officer LaFleur, at this point in time, I, I know he's no longer in the frame, but the gentleman in the in the blue denim shirt, do you know whether or not he was in the room at the time? Um, I don't recall if he was in the room or not. Okay. I know there was some director or whatnot there. Okay. Yeah, I don't have mine either. Yeah, so I start. Yeah, I know, it came off when I was given uh, trying to pack uh, wounds. Yeah. Okay. Does it look like Mr. Baldwin is speaking to a potential witness? He just looks like he's talking to the guy who says his name is the, one of the directors, yes. Okay. Um, is that what you had in mind when you asked Mr. Baldwin not to speak to anyone? No. Do you know what they're talking about? I couldn't hear what they were talking about. I did hear him ask him what cigarettes he was smoking and if he could have one. quite a bit. Everybody was in the room. Okay. Um, I mean, I have a phone on me. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll let you know. Do you see the gentleman in the denim shirt gesturing? You want me to back it up? Yeah, which one? Are we talking about this gentleman? Yeah. Do you, do you know what he's gesturing? No, it looks like he picks up his hand. <coughs> now that you... Now that you play it back, it looks like he's shaking his hand. 
And had you seen him do that previously? No, not until just now. I thought you testified earlier about a shake test. That the gentleman was talking about a shake test. Okay. But I had not seen the director do it until reviewing the footage now. Okay. <coughs> My eyes aren't always exactly where the body cam's pointed, so. Absolutely. Um, when you tell people not to talk about the incident, do you have an expectation that they'll follow your instructions? Yes, ma'am. Does it look like they're following your instructions? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, Officer LaFleur, I'm going to stop the video there. Uh, what, what else did you do on scene that day? Um, I helped um, essentially just wait with uh, other witnesses, I guess, or people that wanted to give a statement or they needed a statement from at a different location. It was their base camp is what they called it. So you needed to take statements from people that were at another location? Is that what you said? No, we took people from where essentially where we had them, and they took them down to their base camp. Um, and that's where they started interviews. And the, the people that you take to base camp, are those the same people that we see here in the video? I believe so. Those people and... Um, I don't know how many people they ended up interviewing. Um, did uh, did at any point in time did Mr. Baldwin tell you that he didn't pull the trigger of the gun? I believe he told me he was holding the gun. Um, I believe in the beginning when I was leaving the church, one of the guys said that Baldwin had pulled the trigger. Um, so just off of what was told. And I know that this sounds ridiculous, but we have to follow some jurisdictional rules. Do you see Mr. Baldwin in this uh, frame here? Yes, ma'am. Would you point him out, please? And do you see that same gentleman in the courtroom today? Yes, ma'am. And would you point him out, please? Uh, he's sitting at the, in the middle with the glasses. Okay. Anything else that you did of import that you can think of that you think the jury should hear about? I think that's about it. How long were you on scene, if you recall? From when I got there was, I don't know, about 10 hours maybe or so. I was there until dark. You were there for 10 hours? Until they were done interviewing people. Is that typical? It is if that's what they need to be done, so. Uh, Your Honor, just for the record, we would ask that the record reflect that Officer LaFleur has identified the defendant. Yes. Thank you. I'll pass the witness. Sorry, Mr. Spiro. Oh, sorry. Get that out of your way. Always fine when the court interrupts me. Sorry. May I proceed? Yes. Thank you, sir. When you got to the scene, Mr. Baldwin walked up to you and said, I, I was holding a gun. He blurted it out, right? Yes. And in fact, you, he was very shocked, very, if you could picture Alec Baldwin in a pale state, very unsure of himself. You could say an actor out of character. Fair? Sure. Object to the formal question. It, it, it is Mr. Spiro testifying in the we question. May we approach? You saw Mr. Baldwin. He looked very shocked. If you could picture Mr. Baldwin in a pale state, unsure of himself, you could say an actor out of character. Is that a fair description? Sure. And he said to you, I'm here, whatever you want to do, right? Yes. He said to you at one point, where should I go, right? Yes. And he also pointed out to you who the director was on scene who was hit in the shoulder, right? I believe so. He asked and inquired about him. And he also asked you how she was doing, right? Meaning Miss Hutchins, right? Yes. I don't remember you being asked about that on direct, were you? And you mean asked by that by the state? Yeah. Objection relevance? Overruled. So I want to take a step back. The dispatch that came over to your radio, sir, before you got to the scene was a dispatch for an accidental shooting by a prop gun, correct? I believe that's what was told to me, yes. And you've testified to that previously, right? In the dispatch court that you re received that, that wording, accidental discharge, several times, right? I believe so. So I want to ask you, I want to ask you, how come when you described it today in court, how come you didn't include the word accident when you testified before this jury? I'm not one to say if it was an accident or not. Just there to actually respond to it. 
and then the detectives determine not whether or not it was an accident. Well, sure, but every other time you've been asked about this, you've said it was an accident. And now today at the trial of Alec Baldwin, when you're talking to this jury, you left that word out. Isn't that true? Not intentionally, no. Did you meet with the prosecutors before you testified here today? Just briefly in, in the room outside for them to tell me who, who was in order of what witness. You've discussed your testimony previously with Ms. Morrissey, correct, before today? Just in the pre-trial interview, yes. We've talked about your lapel that was on. It's true, right, that the lapel is actually mandatory. Yes. Right? And so they came to the officers, passed a law, and told you you had to wear your lapel, right? Yes. And the way it works is it, proceed, it, it cures all of these statements, and when you're done wearing it for the day, you go back to the station, you log it in, and, there's, and then it exists, right? Essentially, but it, it's more complex than that. It uploads on itself. Oh, it self-uploads so that it maintains itself? Yes. And we then t you then talked a little bit about uh, the securing of the scene, and you talked about crime scene tape going up, right? Yes. But it, as you just told this jury at the time, you don't know whether this is an accident or not, right? Yes. It's not like a crime scene tape it is some evidence of a crime, right? And whether it was an accident or a crime, crime scene is still essential. And you've been very candid that you've you made some mistakes at the scene, right? Yes. And that you've learned since then about some of these mistakes, right? Yes. You've said hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Yes. And you know you can Monday morning quarterback decisions, but you made them in the field, right? Yes. And you've said that based on your training and experience, that if witnesses are left to speak to each other, they can taint each other's memories, right? Yes. And sometimes that's incidental and accidental, right? Yes. And sometimes it's purposeful, right? Depends on. Who's there, yes? Well, if you were with somebody and somebody was talking to you about the 911 call, right? And they kept saying to you over and over, it wasn't an accident, it wasn't an accident. And then you testify and you leave out the word accident. That could be an example of taint, couldn't it? Sure. And also non-witnesses contain people's memories too. You agree with me? I guess. Well, at one point in your testimony previously, you had said that there was a lawyer on the scene that was talking to some of the people that were on the scene. I believe so. And if that lawyer told somebody on the scene, I think your understanding is that could have tainted their, their view or their memory, right? Essentially, yes. Mr. Baldwin never asked to speak to that lawyer, did he? I, not to my recollection. And then you went on and you said that you had told Mr. Baldwin not to speak to the other witnesses. Do you remember that testimony? <clears throat> yes. And I think you were asked approximately five times why Mr. Baldwin was disobeying your orders. Do you remember that testimony? Yes. But in the lapel video that we just saw, you're not going up to Mr. Baldwin and, and, or these witnesses going, get, get out of here, get out of here, I'm an officer, you got to separate. You don't do that, right? Nope. And also in that video, you can see a lot of these people are coming over to Mr. Baldwin, right? Yes. One of them comes over and shakes his hand, right? Yes. Have you ever seen that in all of your experience? Somebody commit a homicide and everybody and all the witnesses are on the scene, circling around the person, shaking his hand and talking to him about what happened. Have you ever seen that in your entire career? No. And then you went on to say, well, you didn't put him in the cruiser. You didn't put him in the cruiser because your cruiser was being used, was, was I guess the reason that you gave. Was that, did I understand that right? My patrol unit was being actively used as a post on the other side of the field for a crime scene. When you say a post, you mean like it, it goes somewhere else and you put the tape around it, is that? The side mirror was wrapped around with crime scene tape. You mean, there were also another dozen officers on the scene that, that day that had police cars that they wanted to put Mr. Baldwin in at any point, right? Yep. And in fact, Mr. Baldwin later on drives himself to the precinct and goes and speaks to the police, right? I'm not too sure how he got there, but he did get there. Well, he wasn't under arrest, right? Not to my knowledge, no. And so you use this word detain. When, when Ms. Morrissey asked you, well, was were you detaining Mr. Baldwin? Do you remember that question? Yes. Isn't it true that even today, years later, no police officer has ever represent, rep, arrested Mr. Baldwin or detained him in a police car? True? I don't know. The police department, the Santa Fe Police Department, has never arrested Mr. Baldwin. Not the Get Santa Fe the Police Department. question, asked and answered. And one of the things that you do as an officer on the scene is you observe demeanor, right? Yes. And you spent 10 hours on the scene, I think I heard you say, right? Yes. You got to see the people of Rust that day live, right? 
Yes. And the truth of the matter is that you took it as a way how everybody was acting and that the individual who claimed to have been holding the firearm was still there, that there was no, the way he was, his demeanor was that there, was, there wasn't any intention behind the act, as you could say. Isn't that true? I wouldn't say there was no intention. I don't know the individual's intentions, but his demeanor was sad, upset. Okay, well, it's not just his demeanor being sad and upset, right? I'm going to move that to the side. And I understand you're not a mind reader, right? Correct? Yes. All you can do is look at the people and look at how they're interacting and make your own judgments, right? Yes. And you do that as a police officer to try to figure out how to interact with the scene. True? Yes. And, and, and isn't it true that the way you took it, how everybody was acting and that the individual who claimed to have been holding the firearm was still there, that there was no, the way he was, his demeanor was that there wasn't any intention behind the act as you could say. Isn't that true? Again, the wording you're using, I wouldn't say okay. I had any clue of whose intention was what, but he was sad and upset. Well, let's play, I'm gonna play his statement to that effect. Can we hear that up please, if that's okay with the court? He's saying he, he, did, he, he didn't say that he did, I'm going to impeach him. Well, you want me to clarify that? Are you claiming that you didn't say that? Re rephrase what you said? Sure. Batch said it was an accidental shooting by a prop gun. So I, I didn't know if there was any. I took it as the way how everybody was acting and that the individual who claimed to have been holding the firearm was still there. That there was no, the way he was, his demeanor was that there was, wasn't any intention behind the, the act as you could say. Again, I wouldn't say I knew what his intention was. I understand that. What I'm asking you now is did you in fact say those words that I just asked you? At what time? The Gutierrez or PTI? Yes. May have. You don't deny saying that. No. One more time, I'm just going to ask you, did you say that statement that I read? If you're reading the statement and it says my name next to it, then I more than likely said it. I just don't recall when. And. One of the other things happened that day that, that I don't think we've talked about is you, you, you spoke to a witness who told you that a woman named Sarah was crying and shaking and going through the bullets and saying, I don't know how it got in there. Objection hearsay. I'm asking the, the witness if, if he had that information. But he's making the statement, the hearsay statement is coming in. Do, do you know whether anybody at the scene was, before you got there, shaking and going through the bullets and saying, I don't know how it got in there? I don't know. If we could refresh the witness with his lapel, I would ask that we just, can I put it up on just his screen? I would object because that's not proper refreshment. We don't refresh in front of the jurors. That's my objection. What, what do you mean? Well, if we're refreshing... You know we're going to take a lunch break real quick, and we're going to be back at 1 o'clock. Please don't talk among yourselves. I will rise for the jury. All right, all right, you're excused. You can move over. And this thing is a battery and council approach. Okay, and is this page, I can't see the page at the bottom. Is this page six? Yeah. Okay. And um, do you see how it says accident, accident, accident? I can touch it? Oh, accident. Okay. Um, and then um, I would ask, um, the 911 is exhibits nine and 10, which is now I and J, exhibits nine and 10. It was entered into and played at opening by stipulation, and I'd ask to play and enter them and uh, play exhibits I and J. Yes, Your Honor. I and J, which are, again, the 911 calls? Yes. Why are they two exhibits? It just splits because of the EMS. It's the same okay. Story. All right. So, upon stipulation, not being corrected otherwise, um, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, we turn the volume up. You may publish. We need a net. We need an ambulance out at Bonanza Creek Ranch right now. We've had two people shot on a movie set accidentally. You said someone was shot? Two people accidentally with okay. gun. Gunshots as on movie set, the Nanza Creek Ranch. Okay, send it, send it. It. I'll connect you with medical dispatch. Don't need that. Tennessee Fire and EMS wants the location of the emergency. No, uh, the Nanza Creek Ranch has had two people accidentally shot on a movie set by a prop gun. We need help immediately. Okay. 
I just fucking OD that yelled at me at lunch because asking about revisions. This motherfucker, did you see him when y'all put my jacket and yell at me? He's supposed to check the guns. He's responsible for what happened. Are you now, Mimi? No, no, no. I'm a script supervisor. How, I how many sitting, people were injured? Two I, that I know of. I was sitting, we were rehearsing, and it went off, and I ran out. Um, you heard um, some some language, and then that he, the first assistant, was supposed to check the gun. Did you hear that? Yes. Okay. Did you hear anybody on the 911 call mention Alec Baldwin at all? No. Um, I asked you before we broke about a prior statement. I asked you if you made a prior statement that we talked about a few times. So I'm just going to approach quickly and refresh your recollection. And this is November 30th, 2023, um, your pretrial interview, Officer LaFleur. And I'm just going to ask you to read down here. Your Honor, and again, Mr. Spiro is testifying as he's handing it to the witness. Does that refresh your yeah. recollection, sir? Yes. So it, it, and I'm just going to take this back. It, it is fair that you, you said when, when asked that it, it, and it came in as like, and appeared to be, and what the dispatch said, it was an accidental shooting by a prop gun. So I, I didn't know if there was any, I took it as the way how everybody was acting and that the individual who claimed to have been holding the firearm was still there, that there was Objection, no, your Honor. the way he was. Objection, Your Honor. As I was walking back, my question was, did that refresh your recollection? Yes. Okay. And so it is, is, is it in fact true that in your earlier statement, you said, and it came in like, and appeared to be what the dispatch said it was an accidental shooting by a prop gun. So I, I didn't know if there was any, I took it as the way how everybody was acting and that the individual who claimed to have been holding the firearm was still there, that there was no, the way he was, his demeanor was that there was, wasn't any intention behind the, the act as you could say, you know, yes. You made that statement, correct? Yes. And I asked you also whether you remembered receiving any information as to the ammunition, uh, whether they be prop or otherwise, that was at the scene. If you recalled Duran Curtin, one of the individuals in the church, giving you information. Do you remember that? Um, there's a lot of people in the church giving information. Can you identify which one it was? Sure. I asked you, do you remember whether or not somebody told you that Sarah was shaking and going through the book. Objection, Your Honor. This is hearsay. The, the, this is hearsay coming in. Can we approach? I, I don't know what to do. As I was saying, Officer, did you learn at the scene um, whether or not um, Sarah was going through the bullets and saying, I don't know how it got there? Did you learn that information? Do you recall? I don't remember. If you can refresh my memory to which part, which sure. person said what. And I'm just going to approach the witness and show him his lapel recording. Okay. Does that refresh your recollection? Um, it appears it's a recording type out of what my uh, body worn camera recorded. Yes. Okay. And when you, when you learned this information, did you do anything with that information? To be honest, it's the first time I've um, heard it in that detail. Um, body cameras pick up more audio than our ears do. Okay. Um, you also testified um, that the gentleman in the orange jacket um, came up to you and said, um, Alec pulled the trigger or words to that effect. Remember that testimony? That's what he said, yes. Yeah, and you know um, that that witness has, has stated absolutely he did not see him pull the trigger, correct? At that point, I didn't, I didn't know if he said that or not. Okay. Um, and then I just want to ask you about one other um, thing we talked about this morning was I asked you um, a, about your testimony on direct that, that Mr. Bolden was effectively disobeying police orders. Do you remember that testimony on direct? Yes. Um, and over the lunch break, have you had a chance to reflect on that testimony? Sure. Okay. It, do you think it's a fair, honestly, sir, a fair characterization to this jury to say that Mr. Baldwin was disobeying police orders at the scene? He was given an order, but I didn't repeatedly tell him not to, um, as on my bad. And, and, and so don't you think that given what actually happened at the scene, that really in all fairness to, to Mr. Baldwin, he wasn't really disobeying police orders, was he, sir? To an extent, yes. You were the first officer on scene? Yes. Um, and um, you did your best, no question, right? Yes. And you're aware, right, because a lot of this testimony I'm not going to get into, you're aware as you sit here that the issue of Ms. Hutchins passing is not a contested issue by the defense. You know that? Yes. 
Um, and you did uh, sort of corral the witnesses, I think you said, right? Yes. And then after you did that, you, you turned them over, in essence, to, to the lead detective, Detective Canal. Yes. Okay. And he interviewed those witnesses, right? Yes. Okay. And do you know if he's testifying for the state in this case? Objection. I don't know. Um, nor the question and the non-answer. Do you know how the live bullet got on set? I do not. Do you know um, why the armorer loaded the live bullet into the popcorn? I do not. Do you know why the first um, assistant director, head of safety, failed the detective? I do not. I have no further questions for the service. Cross exam. Can I use the Elmo, please? You know what? Let me let me do this. Where is the defense exhibit DX? That's H. This is H. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just have to read it. Okay. There are three copies. Okay. Officer Lafleur, let's um, let's back up a little bit. Okay. Did I speak with you this morning about the testimony you were going to give? No, ma'am. Did Ms. Johnson speak to you this morning about the testimony you were going to give? No, ma'am. When was the last time someone from the prosecution spoke to you about the testimony you were going to give today? I don't believe we've talked about the testimony I was going to give, but just about the pretrial interview. So you mentioned a pretrial interview. So let me ask you, do you recall when your pretrial interview was? Would it refresh your memory if I showed you a, a, a copy of the transcript? Yes. May I? Let me know. Officer, when was your pretrial interview? In May. And do you recall who was there? Somebody from the defense and uh, somebody from the state. Someone from the defense? Yeah. Oh. Uh, it was a female. Okay. So just to be clear, at your pretrial interview, it wasn't the state just speaking to you. The defense attorneys were there also, right? Yeah. And they got to ask you almost all the questions. Isn't that right? Yes, if I can recall, the state didn't have anything to ask. So the prosecutors didn't ask you a single question? Not that I can remember, no. Do you agree with the defense attorney's uh, assertion this morning that somehow you were coached to give your testimony? Can you rephrase that question? He's objecting the word assertion, I believe. So why don't you rephrase it? Did Mr. Spiro indicate to you on cross-examination that, that did, did he attempt to imply that the prosecution had told you how to testify? Essentially, it sounded like he asked if I was coached into my testimony. But the prosecutors haven't actually told you what to testify to, have they? No, ma'am. You were asked several questions on cross-examination um, about the statement that you made that it didn't seem like Mr. Baldwin intended to commit the act. Do you recall those questions? Yes. Do you know what Mr. B the crime that Mr. Baldwin is charged with? I believe involuntary manslaughter. Is involuntary manslaughter an intentional homicide? No, ma'am. Not to my recollection of the New Mexico State statute. Are there criminal offenses that are intentional homicides? Yes. But that's not what Mr. Baldwin's charged with, right? No. Officer Lafleur, when you are speaking to a witness, at, when you were, in fact, speaking to witnesses at the scene, um, you collected their driver's licenses, didn't you? Yes. And what do you do when you collect the driver's license? Do you run it through a system? I put it in our um, computer system, run it by driver's license in the state. It's easier than name and date of birth. Is Defendant's Exhibit H, do, does that contain information about, uh, about their driver's licenses? Yes. It appeared that it was a page that showed each person's in, uh, license being inputted and the return that came back from RACC or NCIC. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what is uh, page three of that. Uh, what do we call it? Is it a CAD report? Yes. So let me back up for a moment. Um, what is what does CAD stand for? Do you remember? I don't know the exact um, exactly what it stands for. No, but it's a reporting system or, uh, that we use to d dispatch or dispatches us through. And so this is it, is this a dispatch log? Yes. I don't know what. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I know that's getting smaller and smaller. I'm not sure what to do. Do you see um, at the top of the page, do you see uh, number 16 
And there's a 16, and then there's a parenthesis? Yes. What does it say? Posted speed limit and actual. What does posted speed limit and actual have to do with this incident? I'm not too sure. Um, it looks like the individual who ran it, their name, I don't know who that is. Well, that's okay. Do, does this have anything to do with the incident involving Ms. Hutchins? No. So I want to take you down here to number five parentheses. What does that say? It says non-commercial class code D. What is, what is that person talking about? Does it have anything to do with the shooting of Ms. Hutchins? No, that's the return. It came back for a driver's license, it appears. That's the return that came back for a driver's license? Is that what you said? That's what it appears like, yes. Let's go down to number 10. Do you see that? Yes. What does that say? Accident quantity. Keep reading. Um, three withdrawal. It looks like it's going to try to say withdrawal. Does that have anything to do with this incident? No. And look, I want you to look down here at number 21. Do you see that? Yes. What does that say? Of alcohol or drugs. That you're aware of? Does that have anything to do with this incident? No. Let's jump down to number 26. Six. What does that say? Objection, relevance, cumulative. Go ahead, sir. Says drinking and driving at point zero. Did you read it all? Yeah, per se, I think that's what it's saying at the beginning. Dash drinking and driving at point zero. I think the next line is the blood alcohol content BAC. Were you dispatched to a DWI? No. Let's have a look at page five. Do you see up here number 23? Uh, 23 is cut off on my screen. Oops. Of alcohol or drugs. Is this a, an incident that was related to alcohol or drugs? Not that I'm aware. Let's jump down here, if you would, to number 10. Do you see that? It says accidental quantity, zero, and then withdrawal. Does that have anything to do with this incident? No. Why are we seeing that language? It's what uh, the NCIC return gives our CAD. As you can see, it's all within the same tenth of a second. So it's generated by the computer system itself. So I've now turned the page to page six. Do you see 10 there where it says 10 parentheses? Accidental quantity, zero withdrawal. Is that... Is the word accident reflective of, uh, of, of Ms. Hutchins being shot on accident? No. Is the word accident in that report, it, 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 does it appear anywhere where it's talking about what happened to Ms. Hutchins? No, the, right here, it's just a bunch of returns. Thank you for your time, sir. I don't have anything further. Use next witness.